Ruin My Childhood. Thank you for listening to Ruin My Childhood, the podcast where we decide if some things are better left in the past. I'm Mike. And I'm Kat. And what are we going to be uh, watching and then discussing? Big. Big? Big. Big? What's big? Big. The 1988 Penny Marshall film starring the always charming Tom Hanks. He is always charming. He is. He is delightful. That's America's dad. America's dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you remember about this movie? Um, uh, I remember that Tom Hanks is a child in a man's body. Okay. And he got that way from Zoltar. Like Zoltar. At, at a carnival. One of those little fortune teller. Make-a-wish things. I mean, there are no dead children involved, but sure, <laughs> Make-A-Wish is a great organization. <laughs> Maybe they put on a carnival. I'm sure they've put on a carnival at some I'm point. I'm sure they have. So, you you got the basic premise of the movie, right? There you go. Do you remember That's any you any need. highlights of the movie? Um, I mean, there's like, a they jump on a trampoline at some point. I just remember really liking it. Yeah, we've I remember definitely, really liking it. We've That's definitely it. watched it in the last five to ten years yeah. at some point uh the only thing that i really remember is they've got like a secret handshake and like a rap or not maybe not a rap but a like rap? some song that they go with it and that's how uh Jimmy, tom Jimmy hanks Cocoa that's the one <laughs> uh tom hanks proves to his his child best friend that he is in fact who he says he is and other than that like i know there's a catalyst as to why he wishes to be big but I don't know what it is. Like, all these, like, body swap movies or... I mean, don't all the... guys wish that they were bigger at some point in their lives? No. No, they do. I definitely wish I was bigger when I was younger. <laughs> 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 I was little. So, yeah, that's all I really, re really remember. But uh, you mentioned Penny Marshall. We decided to do this movie because, unfortunately, she did pass away a couple weeks ago. And uh, we wanted to... to Watch something in her honor. She made some amazing contributions to cinema. This, uh, I know this movie was a big deal because it was obviously directed by her. And I think this was like the first movie to make over, I don't know the exact dollar amount, but there was like a threshold and that was the first movie to ever do so with a female director. Nice. So I don't know what that threshold is. I'll look it up and get back to you when we actually watch the movie <laughs> and talk about it. But I remember seeing that on like the news or something about that. That she broke a record with this movie. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Lady was badass. She was League of Her Own uh League of Their Own. That was a mm -hmm. good movie too. Uh Tom Hanks is in that one as well. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so I think maybe we should get to our listeners and see what they remember. Got it. Did you get any comments? Um Well, I've got one and I will read it. Uh so this is from I Am Spaceship. Oh man, this person's great. They did punctuation correctly. So it says <laughs> she'll have her Send legs. Send the bar real high there. <laughs> she'll have her legs around you so tight you'll be begging for mercy. Well, I'll stay away from her then. And then uh. it also says, and Mike, great job on the guest appearance on Get to the Podcast. I wish I had thought to do trivia questions like you and Tony the Movie Guy because there's so much great Back to the Future trivia. And yes, at Katrina Ossity, I am Spaceship does sound like I am Groot, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, he commented on an, an earlier episode and you made fun of his name nice uh i am spaceship okay well like uh, i am spaceship i know who you are now you uh you you were on the same episode of get to the podcast that i was on recently uh get, get to the podcast friend friend of the show friend of uh, mdx pod networks in general uh nick gambino and tiago have been on our some of our podcasts and i was recently on their 100th episode which was great so check that out and Nice to talk to you. I'm Check spaceship. that out. And uh, thanks, thanks Check for listening out. to the to the show. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thanks for listening. Did you have any comments? No, I was just mocking yeah, you. I have. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, I always have comments, Michael. Um, but no, no, no one, no one got... wanted to comment about yeah, big. Come one. on, guys. It's, it's okay. It's, Whatever. It's 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 okay. I won't forget this. Oh, you're all of our listeners dead to us dead all right well let's just go watch the movie okay
Have you ever had a really big secret? Josh Baskin has. I turned into a grown up mom. But no one would believe him. It's Josh. Not his best friend. Coach Not his girlfriend. Before I met you, I was in Little League. Oh, right. And just yesterday, I was a schoolgirl with pigtails. Not even his mother. What have you done to my son? Where are you, son, mom? Where is my child? Tom Hanks. Ah! Big. Rated PG. Starts Friday, June 3rd at theaters everywhere. All right. We just watched Big, and it was pretty good. It was delightful, it was just delightful. as I expected. I yeah, it was it was really good. the The humor was great in it. The pacing in this movie was incredible. Yeah, I was surprised. Like by the time they were in New York already, so he'd already made his wish, got big, and was living in New York City in less than twenty minutes. That's pretty pretty good. Yeah, to like. Do some character development, set up the plot, and get him there. And they did a good job. I didn't feel like they cut out. No, anything. it didn't feel rushed at all. Like everything was perfect. Uh, do you want to summarize the movie? Listen, dude, I got in a car accident. My car estimate just <laughs> came back joke. today, totaled. <laughs> that sucks. I'm in you pain. You like that car? I'm stressed. That was a joke. You've My never, brain does not work, and never, I, I do not like doing summaries. <laughs> in 50-plus episodes, you've done zero Here, here's summaries. Here's what would happen if I were to do a summary of a film. You would interject every 10 seconds and correct everything that I said. That's true. Yeah. It's pointless. You're off and wrong. Wow. <laughs> oh, Lord, Michael. Well, I'll just summarize it then. A uh, pretty simple plot. All right, so this movie is pretty simple. It stars Tom Hanks, like we've talked about already. Uh, his name is Josh, and in the beginning of the movie, he is like 12 years old. He's hanging out of, at a liquor store with his buddy, Billy, and they're talking about girls just being, you know, kids and having fun, and he's into this girl, and he, he thinks that this girl might like him, and he's too shy, and the girl comes up and says hi to him, and he's just, he hasn't blossomed into a young man yet. He's just still very childlike and innocent. And his parents decide to take him to a carnival, and he is unable to ride on this like roller coaster like thing at this carnival. So he gets upset because he's embarrassed in front of this girl that he likes. And so he runs to this machine, a Zoltar machine, puts a quarter in it, wishes to be big. And the next day he grows up in a full grown adult's body, and he moves to New York and gets a job. Awesome. I like how you say his parents decide to take him to a carnival. Like they sat down and had a serious discussion about it. They're like, son, we're taking we've you to decided a carnival. to take you to a carnival. <laughs> 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 Today, you are a man. And you're going to the carnival. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that carnival scene was, was kind of ridiculous. So, so he went to the carnival with his family. Right. Because that's how normal people would say that. <laughs> His parents did decide to take him. <laughs> okay? They decided as a family. They, they decided. <laughs> as a family, they were going to go have fun at the little carnival, okay? <laughs> and he's like, I want to go on that ride. They're like, okay, we'll go. And he's like, no, I need to go by myself. Like, I think it's the thing to do. Okay, here, you're not even setting it up correctly, Michael. So he's at the carnival. He sees that chick. Who said hi to him when he was out with his friends. He's got a huge crush on her. She's standing in line for this ride. He decides he wants to go stand in line with her. So he leaves his family behind. He's like, no, I, I want to go on this ride by myself. He pushes straight through the line. Like, it's not it's not roped off. There are no stanchions here. No. He just shoves every single person. He goes from, to the back of the from line. From the back of the line <laughs> to where this girl is and pushes through all of them instead of just walking around and being like, hey, instead what's up? Can I stand with you? An intersex path. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Little weirdo. So he meets up with this chick. And Who's she's like eight feet taller than him. Yeah, pretty much. But I mean, like, uh, girls girls mature faster and they do their growth spurt for younger yeah so like all of elementary school most of middle school girls are gonna be taller yeah it's it's just awkward it's, and, and weird it's true um true facts but it turns out she's like already on a date with a guy who drives the, he drives he drives so he gets to the front of the line and he's shunned and they're like whoa 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 buddy you're way too short for this and that kind of I kind of grinded my gears, if I'm being honest with you. You have some PTSD from being a small child. No, 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 no. That's the thing is, so 
by the time I was 10, I, I, I was the second shortest kid in elementary school for the boys. You started out short, and then you're like, I'm just not going to eat through all of junior high, so I can be nice and, and itty bitty. I'm average. And and for the rest of my life, anger my wife no, with my picky eating. Hey, Katrina, will you <laughs> keep, be professional and keep it to the podcast, all right? <laughs> That's why you were little. Hey, no, I wasn't. Li- that wasn't why I was little when I was younger. Just knock it off, all right? Picky eater. Anyhow, I was the second shortest kid. Um... Out of the boys. Why were you so short? Just stop it, okay? Was, was I was your brother like, short? He didn't grow. He didn't shoot up until like middle school. Was he average before that? Yeah, about yeah, because yeah. he ate like a normal no. Person. He didn't. He didn't even eat French fries. Okay. okay he doesn't like, like French fries. He doesn't like French fries. That doesn't mean he that's didn't weird. eat anything else. That is weird. That is weird. And you didn't eat anything else. That's not true. Anyway, <laughs> back to the podcast, uh-huh. Katrina. That's a podcast. No, it's not. That's a podcast. No, stop it. Isn't it? Stop it. Or is it get to the podcast? What? That That's a different... What? You said back to the podcast. Oh, uh, get to the podcast, yeah. And <laughs> with the number two. Anyway, I had an issue with it because even when... It was when just I- a fart. It wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> When I was 10 years old and I went to like Great America, I was tall enough to go on every ride. Ooh. And I was sure... This is a little carnival ride, and this kid was 12 and couldn't go on that ride. And I was like, there's no, there's no way. So I have, like, major anxiety. I refused to go upside down on a roller coaster until I was, like, 15. Oh, that's lame. Yeah. It, it was really annoying, honestly, for everyone <laughs> who went to a theme park with me because I would try and, and make it happen. I'd stand in line, and then... We'd get halfway through the line, like my palms are sweating, and like I feel knees like knees weak, gonna... arms are heavy. There's vomit on your sweater already. Jesus. Mom's spaghetti. Stop. <laughs> oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a big deal. It was a huge anxiety you're thing. You're ready to drop Stop. bombs. Stop! <laughs> oh my lord! But you keep on I'm forgetting gonna... what you wrote down. The whole crowd boasts so loud. Okay, just done. please stop. I'm done. Never ever <laughs> ever talk in rhythm. <sighs> Go ahead. Well, you completely ruined the story because you have to be the center of attention <laughs> no, all was, the time. You set me up for that so well. Yeah, and then you kept going <laughs> past the point where it was funny. I'm sorry, but sometimes you gotta lose yourself to the Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you were a pain in the ass because just... you'd wait in line and then at the last minute you would would bounce. Well, you interrupted the story so many times, it's not even funny anymore, Michael. I'm sorry, but you said, I had to take that. Mm-mm. You don't understand. You don't understand. Let's just move on. <laughs> I'm not even going to finish my story. Anyway, I just thought that was lame. That anyway, that was I like to hear myself talk. I'm Mike. Actually, I don't like my voice that much. <laughs> <laughs> or my laugh. Go ahead. You you have a lot to say, Michael. No, I'm, I, I, tell me about this movie. Tell me everything. Tell me your thoughts. I I liked it. <laughs> Do you have any highlights that you want to talk about? Nope. None. There's mm. nothing you want to talk about on this podcast. Not anymore. Hey. Hey. What did What did you like? What was your favorite part? <sighs> was it the banging of a child and Elizabeth Perkins? Jesus Christ. Well, my highlights are we haven't gotten that far yet. So, yeah, it, it, it was ridiculous that he couldn't go on the ride. And then he goes and makes that wish, right? And the Zoltar machine was unplugged, so it's magic. It is magic. That's that's This is one of those movies, and I there's a term for it, or at least I've heard a term for it, where it's like realistic magic or magical realism or something like that. It's a supernatural cop-out. Right, where it's like, <laughs> it's a normal world. Everything else is the same. Right. But one one aspect is magical, and it's one of those things where it makes for a fun movie. You know, you have to get <laughs> this going somewhere. Always has to do with a foreigner. It, mo- <laughs> it does. <laughs> this one didn't have a foreigner. It was a machine. Zoltar. Zoltar was obviously a foreigner. He Whoa. was wearing a turban. Okay, put on a MAGA hat. <laughs> oh, I mean, seriously. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the, it was magic. I'm just pointing out that little bit of residual racism. Right. There always has to be like a mystic or or a monk or something that that's not white. No, you're right. Um, 
But yeah, the machine was unplugged. Ooh. Ooh. So the scene where he's figuring out what's going on was pretty good. Like he wakes up literally the next day in a man's body. And it's funny because he shares a room with his like baby sisters, like one or two years old. And she's like totally chill. It's like a strange man being in the room when she wakes up. Well, because she knows it's him. He How? just looks different. She just knows. She just intuitively knows. If she's a child. They're like animals. I don't know about that because some people, when they have dads with like mustaches or beards and they shave them, they're like, get freaked out. Some kids are dumb. <laughs> I'm like my sister. Actually, I did that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, my dad shaved his beard and I refused to go near him until he grew it out again. And I was like three. <laughs> uh, yeah, my sister like screamed when my dad shaved his mustache. <laughs> and she was like two or three years old as well. Uh, I did think it was funny how he tried to put on his like pant, like his his own pants like his jeans and it didn't work and then so he runs into the bath the first thing he does is he looks at his penis he does. <laughs> but he managed to fit it in his regular undies yeah i mean i guess he grew into that because he was running around he wearing the little tidy whities well and then he puts on sweatpants and everything that's the only thing he could wear is sweatpants his and... balls must have been oh, so uncomfortable yeah they they had to have been <laughs> i really love this scene where i don't really remember what happened so he leaves uh on his bike and then comes back almost immediately and tries to convince his mom that he is josh and he like accidentally breaks like an ashtray or mug or something that he made and he's like i made this smash and she's like freaking what did you do with my boy and pulls a knife on him and he's like oh my birthmark and he like pulls down his pants to show her a birthmark <laughs> on his butt it was it was it she was... thinks that he's some kind of pervert who has snuck into her house but at this point it's not entirely clear if he's already been reported missing or not. No, at this point it hadn't. Like, it's that morning because she right. keeps calling him, like, so come for breakfast. So it's weird that she says, where's my boy, when, like, she was communicating with him already. Yeah, because he, he was, kept... like, yelling from the bathroom. Right. And then he ran off. So it's just odd that she kind of jumped to, where's my boy, when yeah. he should have been at school. Or on his way home from school? or On his way to school, because he literally went outside, rode his bike for a little bit, and then came right back. Because right after she yells at him, pulls the knife, he runs away again and then goes to school to find Billy. Right. So, yeah, that was strange, because at most, because he did go and say, like, oh, I already ate breakfast, or something like that, and Real runs life, off. she's like, she's annoyed that she made breakfast he didn't eat, but she's also like, oh, he's at school, I don't have to think about him until three. Right. Like, so, she probably is not given, you know. No, that didn't really make all that much <laughs> sense. So he goes to the school and tells Billy what's up. And he does his little, like, handshake to figure out what's going on. So they both ditch and they go to New York. And the 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 kid, Billy, his best friend, goes to his dad's sock drawer and takes money and goes, that's for emergencies. Like, what do you think this is? <laughs> and they go to this, they, they go to this, like, really, like, seedy part of New York and like prostitutes are hitting on both of them and he goes hey josh here's a great place and he goes that doesn't look great at all and he goes no it's got to be great it's religious it's called like saint james or something saint like that james it's religious <laughs> and he goes up and it's just like the gnarliest hotel and he cries going to sleep and it's really sad yeah and then he they this movie takes place over six weeks Right. And Which it, is insane. It's weird because they like flash back to him calling the mom on a regular basis. And at no point is the mom's phone like being monitored. By are the there... police. Yeah. There would be like cops there or like some kind of a recording device for her Just to turn on. Just in case. On. Right. Yeah. Well, and so the thing that's weird. So six weeks. And the we the reason we know it's six weeks is... He they go and try to figure out where the Zoltar went, so they actually go back to the fair and uh, it's obviously it was a you know like a one day carnival or something like that. Everything and no gone. one cleaned up their garbage. No, it was pretty dirty. It was just all floating off into the Hudson. Yep, yep. Is that the Hudson? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a New Yorker. Uh, <laughs> they so were in Brooklyn, right? I, I don't know where they actually were. I, I have no idea. I'm it could pretty be Brooklyn. sure that's the park maybe it was at Queens. Oh, I have no idea. I have no idea where they actually were. So <laughs> they 
they go into like all these different arcades and try to figure out what Zoltar is or where it is and they can't find it. So they go to some government building and ask for information and they're like, okay, you'll get it in six weeks. And then they decide he needs to get a job. And so he gets a job doing data entry at a toy factory or a company that manufactures toys. And that interview was great. It was. Yeah. Uh, so, like, Billy's there with him. How did they onboard him with a fake social security number? So, this was pre internet, so it takes a little bit. I'm sure it takes a little bit of time for that background check to go through. And they, what they realistically probably do is just check the name. There's no internet. So, like, it's, it, that's like, even today, background checks can take two to three weeks. Uh, and back then, it probably took away longer. Like he was, it, man. It would have been so easy to become a millionaire in the eighties. Yeah, man. It's fraud. Yep. <laughs> so he, uh, no, that the, the social security thing they actually do comment on. So they, he's like, oh, I need a social security number. I don't know what it is. So uh, Billy writes down a number, and he goes, "What's that?" He goes, "Oh, that's my locker combination." And so during the interview, as he's about to get called in, like the secretary is like, "Hey, your your son needs to stay here," and they they got a kick out of that. And you know, it's like, "Okay, Billy, boy, you stay here." All right, Dad, kind of thing, like <laughs> really hamming it up. And in the in the interview process, the guy interviewing goes, "Hey, you're missing a couple of numbers from your social," and he goes, "Twelve. <laughs> so yeah, they clearly don't know what that stuff is, right. and. You know, they made up a complete resume for it. And he goes, where did you go to school? And he goes, GW. Uh, or he goes, they call it George Washington. Oh, GW, my brother-in-law went there. Yeah. Did you pledge? And he goes, yeah, every morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, it was it, you know, it was a lot of little stuff like that. I, I There was one joke where Billy says something along the or Josh says something along the lines where it's just before he got the job and he's feeling like he everything's going wrong because he finds out there it's going to take six weeks before the the zoltar information so he goes i'm going to be stuck as a 30 year old forever and so i go how does he know he's 30 <laughs> that kind of right? thing and then billy goes hey you could you could be a lot older than that and i was like yeah way to go billy you're reading my mind i mean he looks like he's pushing 40 in this movie he didn't look like tom hanks this was young did. tom hanks he, he looked like he was early 30s eh, mid to late 30s Maybe, I guess. Maybe, I guess. Um, so yeah, he gets this job doing data entry, and John Lovitz data is in this entry? movie. Data entry. Data. 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 What data? Data. What data? Data. What data? Data. What data? I don't know. <laughs> so he he gets a job doing like basic data entry, and John Lovitz is like comes and he's like typing, and John Lovitz is like. Hey, buddy, slow down. You're going to get us all fired. And he's barely, he's typing like, he's like pecking at the keyboard. He's probably doing like 20 words per minute, if even that. And John right. it's like, slow down. And Companies then, are like that, though. People who have been in that cushy job for like five years, you know. Right. Someone new comes on board. They're like, just just keep it at our right. level. We're all happy. Well, and this is where the uh, quote from I Am Spaceship comes in. He goes, you know, Tom Hanks asks John Lovitz, like, hey, how long have you been here? He goes, five years, but I only stay for the the additional perks. And they look at this woman, and he goes, you say hello to her, and she let, she'll sleep with you. And then he says oh, the, geez. the quote, like, she'll wrap your legs around you so bad you can't, you know, you won't be able to breathe or something like that. And <laughs> then Josh, because he's a kid and, like, isn't, like... That's intimidating to him. He's like, I'll be sure to stay away. And John Levis just looks super confused. <laughs> yeah. And th yeah, and then like you said, he calls his mom a couple times. Uh, he ends up at a toy store. He at L O A um L O A L is it L O A Schwartz or is it L A O Schwartz? I can't even remember because that is so F -A -O. not It's F A O Schwartz. F A it's F A O Schwartz. F A O Schwartz. Uh, one of the <laughs> I don't think that's a Toy Story anymore. I think that's gone. I think it closed a couple of years ago. Yeah, but really famous Toy Story, and he does one of the most famous scenes in this movie. You know, he sees like a walking keyboard, and he ends up playing with the boss, and that's how he gets his job. Where he ends up becoming like the vice president of toy manufacturing, and so he gets to decide all the toys that are being made, and that's pretty much the movie where he he's got like the dad from Home Alone. He gets a huge apartment. He gets a huge apartment that he fills with toys. So, 
this had to be like he was working there for a week or two. Yeah, so he gets his first paycheck before this happens. So yeah, he gets so a paycheck. two weeks later, then somehow he's able to get this massive apartment, and he drops a lot of money filling it with random well, stuff. Well, because he gets an executive position, because he doesn't get the apartment until after he gets promoted. So he runs into his boss at at the toy store, and the, the boss is walking around, and he's like, the whole movie, the reason he gets in that position, the whole reason he gets in that position is because the dad from Home Alone is hard data and he keeps giving all these spreadsheets and data on how, like what toys will do well based off just number crunching where the boss likes to go to and see different toy stores and see what the kids are actually picking up off the shelves right. so he sees tom hanks playing laser tag and then they end up playing on that walking piano which that that walking piano that was an actual thing yeah it was now the they original... must have rehearsed a lot to so, pull that off. There's a couple things that happened with that. So the actual walking piano that was available to purchase at that time was only six feet long and only did one octave. So Penny Marshall went to the creator of the walking piano and asked to make a three octave version because she really wanted them to be able to play heart and soul. <laughs> so they actually specially made one that was 16 feet long for this movie. That's awesome. And then to your point, they actually had uh, like dancers who were going to do like doubles who were supposed to play it. But Tom Hanks and the guy who plays the boss, I can't remember his name, but he's also in Scarface. It's like Frank Langaya or something like that. They, they want for like a sense of pride, they wanted to be able to do it. So of they did course. the whole thing and they learned how to do it. And it only took them like two takes to actually do it. Whoa. Something like that. That's insane. So yeah, they got that choreography down and they really wanted to do it. So that's how he gets the job and you know the toy he starts just playing with toys and there's a really great scene where the guy who's all about data makes a transformers toy that's a building and tom hanks keeps going like i don't get it and he goes it's transforms into he goes yeah but it's a building what how fun is it to play with the building and at this point this guy hates tom hanks he thinks he's like a shark and he starts calling all these different toy companies to figure out where this guy's from and nobody knows who he is and then at that point, Elizabeth Perkins, who's dating that guy, decides she kind of likes him, but still keeps her distance. So they end up going to like a company party and it's like a black tie event. Everyone's wearing a black tux and Tom Hanks shows up on a white tux. <laughs> he shows up in white tails. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, a full on, uh, might as well be playing in a mariachi thing or right. ice skating or something. Right. Dancing a paso doble or something. Right. So craziness. yeah, full on tails. And he eats baby corn like regular corn. <laughs> <laughs> I love that part so much. It's a long take, too. Yeah. Of him just eating it's this like little baby seconds. corn. like 30 seconds. Apparently that was improvised. So what I love about this movie is that it's fast-paced, but there's something to laugh at pretty much like every five seconds. Yeah, no, But if you take the time to laugh at something, you're not going to miss anything crucial. But it also like gives these improvisations room to breathe which is really nice as well yeah it lets it's, the jokes it's like land. the perfect balance of fast paced but also letting the jokes land right um and there's a lot of like visual humor in this movie too where yeah. you, the, him eating the baby corn and then uh elizabeth perkins character is her name susan i don't know Let's yeah susan susan yeah it's susan she goes to talk to the boss and starts talking about like business stuff. She's like, "It's a party. Go have a drink. Go have two drinks." And then she goes to she, and she's kind of dating the yeah the she's guy the dating the, Peter the McAllister data, the data guy. So he he says something like not so nice to her as well. So then she goes to hang out with with Josh, and she asks if he wants to get a drink. And he's like, "Can we get a milkshake?" And she goes, "Okay, we have a car." So she, they get in a limo, and there's a point where he's, like, bending over trying to get something in the limo. And uh, he's wearing white underwear. He needs to get nude underwear. He, his panty right? lines were showing. Seriously. Why don't men have nude undies? Okay, I don't so, know. like, I, I, mean, I know that, like, you know, performers have their dance stuff. And, like, dancers have stuff specially made. But, you know, out there in the real world... Where do men get their nude chonies? I've never seen nude What if they underwear? want to wear some fine, funky, fresh white pants? Right. And they don't some want nice panty white lines. chinos? Yeah. It's I don't know. Or, panty or discrimination. Or like a, like a nice linen suit. 
Right? I don't want panty line. Do men like secretly take your panties off? Do they dye their no their tidy whiteies no, they to don't. a nude color? No. Are they, they just, just going commando when they wear white pants? No, because you'll in white pants you'll see the outline of your 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 pecker. Ew. Ew. <laughs> if, depending if it's an upper you're gonna see a panty line. Pecker is like the worst thing you can call it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there. He, get some nude underwear, bro. If you're gonna wear a white tight suit, okay? yeah. But where would he find? I don't know, underwear? man. I don't know. Come on. So they end up at like his apartment, and she's like super thirsty out of anywhere. She's like, right. I don't know if we should do this yet, kind of thing. He's like, Do what? She was like, I mean, I like you, but I don't know if I'm ready to, you know, you know, sleep, you know, with you. And he goes, Oh, you want to? You want to? You want to come in and stay night? over? You want to <laughs> spend the night? And she goes, okay. And he goes, all right, I'm on top. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's a bunk bed. It's a bunk bed. Yeah, and they, like, jump on the trampoline, and it's really sweet. But It's sweet, but then at the end, like, they obviously bang. Well, not, and... at, this, not at this part. It's later on that they bang. Yeah. Because it's super still, awkward when they actually do. Not okay. So the thing is, at this point. I, I love this one scene, though, when... When she first realizes there's a giant trampoline in his apartment, right. and she's looking around, and she's like, oh my lord, it's just all toys. Right. This guy's weirder than I thought, and she still wants to bang him. Right. Well, at this point, you gotta think- It's like, like at this point, you're like, is he on the spectrum, or is he like severely mentally handicapped? Yeah, he's gotta be special at this and point. And she was willing to not figure out if there were- <laughs> If it was one or the other, and was still like all in, so he convinces her to jump on the trampoline with him. Right, and she walks over to the trampoline and and she moves as though she's expecting him to help her jump up on it, and he just like leaves her standing there, and he jumps up on the trampoline. Yeah, and then he's like, <laughs> and "Can she you has help to me?" Climb up on her. Well, no, he, she's like, "Are you gonna help me?" He's like, "Oh yeah, my bad." And he goes and like drags her onto the trampoline. Yeah, because so he's a child; he doesn't understand it. it. And, you know, they, she goes to sleep on the bottom bunk and he, like, comes down and gives her, like, a glow-in-the-dark compass ring. And then, like, the next morning, the, um, I keep calling him Peter McAllister because I don't know the character's actual name. Uh, he finds out that they, she's went over there. And so she, he gets really upset and make, takes Josh to the park to play racquetball. And then cheats. And then they, like, wrestle in front the of everybody. fight over the ball. Yeah. Because he calls him out on trying to cheat at the game. And so that he's holding on to the ball. And Josh will not give him the yeah, ball because he's cheating. Hand hand. He's like, give me the ball. No. No, no, no. you cheated. It's great. It, it It's a, another long take situation where it's all just physical humor. <laughs> yeah. And these two grown men fighting over a racquetball. I love that scene. And then you just see, like, slowly all these New Yorkers just stop to watch. <laughs> I feel so like good. New Yorkers wouldn't stop for that. Nah, they wouldn't care. No. Uh, but then that actually galvanizes the relationship between him and Susan because, like, it just cuts to him being at her apartment. He's like, I don't understand why you punched me. And then... You know, they go on a couple more she dates. tends his wounds. Tends his wounds. They go on a couple more dates. And then, like, the sex happens. So they did the sex. Weird. But it's really awkward because it's just like this shot where they're standing in a doorway. And she takes off her top and, you know, is just wearing a bra. And he's just, like, awkwardly groping her breast. Okay. So, like, physically, physically, there's no indication that he's a child. So, in that respect, it's fine but in every other respect it's not fine because right. she has to realize that he he's at least slow right he's at least very slow and i feel like you should kind of figure out how slow someone is because there is a point where a slow person could be very childlike and a childlike person you know in certain ways they can't really handle that kind of thing right well, and then the way he groped her, yeah. she would she would think that should like be a little worried. That... It's so gross. Well, and she misunderstands some of the things he says. Thinking she thinks that he's lived with a woman before, mm -hmm. because she goes, she says something along the lines of like, "Have you lived here long? No, is it just you?" And he goes, "That's a new thing," or something like that. Right. So she's thinking he just got out of some relationship. Mm -hmm. But what's weird is right after he they sleep together, he 
drastically changes. He becomes like an adult. So like the next day he goes to his office and like he has a sign that says like do not enter or no girls allowed or something like that. And he just rips it off and he stops returning his calls with Billy and he asks for coffee black and he starts, you know, going to these business meetings and doing presentations. Because well, and- he wants to impress her. And at the same time, it's like if you have a physical connection with someone like with sex, your body kind of knows what to do. Right. I guess. To an extent. So awkward. But he completely changes his personality to the point where even once Billy, like, Billy ditches school, comes and confronts him, and he's like, this is important, I'm at work, go away. Like, he he becomes like an adult. It's a it's kind of, I don't know if the magic of the wish basically was like, once you become big and then you act like an adult, you become an adult. I don't, I don't know, maybe it's a Peter Pan-like thing. Not sure, because he was a completely different person. Yeah. And, you know, he comes up with this, like, this new product idea of, like, an interactive comic book, and then Billy shows up and uses, this was another thing that was a big deal, so this was, so PG movies didn't come out until, um, I can't remember what the first actual PG movie was. The second Indiana Jones movie, Temple of Doom, was, like, the second PG-13 movie, and this was, like, one of the last PG movies to have an F-bomb in it, like, because this is just straight PG. Oh, wow, really? So, yeah, this has an F-bomb. But it's technically hmm. PG, because PG-13 was How fairly weird. new at the time. It's only been around for, like, a couple of years. So they were still kind of, like, figuring out what a PG versus PG-13 is. It was is. when we were easing into expecting other people to raise our children yeah, for exactly. us. Exactly. <laughs> Just dipping our toes right. in here. And so what's really weird is, you know, at this point, after Billy kind of, like, yells at him, Josh tells Susan that he's a child and she thinks he wants to break up and takes it as like, we all act like a child sometimes. We're nervous, scared. And he's like, no, I'm literally a child. <laughs> so weird. And so she gets upset and then she sees Billy and she's like, oh, wait, there's this like other kid hanging around. Maybe this is real. So she goes, talks to Billy and Billy's like, yeah, he's totally a kid. <laughs> You're going to jail. No, he doesn't say, <laughs> say that, but. And then they end up at the Zoltar machine and he wishes to be normal and he's a kid again and he's wearing like this big suit and she's like, maybe in like five years you come and find me. Ew. At Ooh, that point you know he's a child and that crosses, that's where it's like, you have some plausible deniability initially. Like he was an adult's body. And th- that's in so many movies where people are like, look me up when you're older. It was that's in blank so check. so gross. That's yeah. so gross. Ew. Yeah, it's Ew. like, even in five years, so he's 12 or six years, and he becomes 18, it's like 18 to somebody who's in their 30s. Like, that's weird. Yeah. Like, there's there's nothing, yeah, the whole situation is completely weird, and there's a lot of ramifications for him becoming a child again, because, like, an executive <laughs> at this toy company is just gone. I know. <laughs> He just dis- he was kind of weird to begin with. He shook everything up. He made a bunch of friends, and then he just ditched. You're right. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, people would also kind of be like, yeah, I can see that happening. Right. <laughs> He's gone. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. He was a weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing that's weird about this movie is it almost didn't get made. Oh. So Tom Hanks was the first choice. But he was unavailable because he was filming Dragnet and Punchline. And then after that, nobody wanted to do the movie. Hmm. So then Robert De Niro decided he wanted to do it. That's so random. Right. So the kid that they actually cast as young Josh, the young Tom Hanks, they actually cast him like first. And then they got Robert De Niro and they're like, well, that kid can't play young Robert De Niro. So they switched him to like the best friend role. Well, then Robert De Niro started negotiating, and he wanted, like, $6 million for this movie. And back then, that was, like, unheard of. Like, that was way too much money for, you know, a little comedy. So he ended up dropping out. But then once he was interested, everybody was interested. So Harrison Ford auditioned, John Travolta, um, Dennis Quaid, like, everybody went for this movie. So imagine Harrison Ford? Yeah, that would be strange, because he doesn't do, like, comedy no no i don't i can't imagine him doing this but she really wanted and, john travolta Harrison ford like could actually just be a reanimated corpse sometimes yeah sometimes he's very sometimes he's, he's charming very but stiff 
He is stiff a lot of the times. Yes, I agree. So He has always been stiff. Think of him shooting a gun. Stiff. Never has anyone ever been so stiff in pulling out a gun and shooting someone. Yeah, he's pretty stiff. He's real stiff. Um, so John Travolta was the next in line. She really wanted John Travolta, Penny Marshall. And he would have been good. The studio said no because he was box office poison at that point. Oh, because he his career took like a steep nosedive, and then so for for years the only thing he was doing was the Look Who's Talking movies. And then Scientology saved and, it. Well, no, he was doing Scientology <laughs> even before he did Carrie. Yeah, he, he did. Was doing he was Scientology when in he was the seventies, right? Yeah, he started doing it in the seventies. Oh, Scientology. So he um. But obviously, Pulp Fiction is what brought him back. So eventually, with all these different things, finally Tom, Tom Hanks freed up, and they brought brought him in. And uh, you know, that's 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 what happened. Pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, oh! Earlier at the top of the episode, I mentioned that I was going to circle, look up a fact, and get back to you because I mentioned that broke some record. This was the first. You mentioned female, that what? That there was some fact, like some record that was broken, but I didn't know the exact figure. This was the first movie to break $100 million at the box office that was directed by a female. Heck yeah. Yep. Way to go. So, Miss Katrina, mm-hmm. do you have anything else to talk about with this movie? No. You ruined your childhood? No. I no, it was really movie. good. I thoroughly it's enjoyed watching delightful. it. delightful. I would watch it again, like, next week. Yeah, it was really good. The pay- Like you said, pacing was spectacular. There was never a point where it dragged, but it also never went too quick. Cool. So, uh... What are we going to be watching next episode? The Rescuers. The Rescuers Down Under? Yep, a 1970s animated classic featuring two tiny adorable mice. <laughs> just the regular Rescuers. I wanted to do Down Under, but you, we're just going to Nobody do cares about the Rescuers Down Under, Michael. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird that that's the one you're invested in. That's the one that I own. Anyway. How do you own Rescuers Down Under? You don't I don't know. Rescuers. I didn't buy them. I was a child. Uh, your family. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to watch The Rescuers. It's got a mouse and another mouse and some other animals. We're yeah. going to watch it. <laughs> and the devil's eye. Oh. Mm. Oh, that sounds interesting. I love this it movie. sounds intriguing. I'm excited. All right. So where can our listeners find you? I'm all over the internet at Katrinaocity. Check out my YouTube channel that has very few videos going up because I got in a car accident. My life fell yeah, apart. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Uh, check fun. out check out our YouTube uh, link in the description below. Link on our website. It's you, you can find it if you really want to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everything else that's MDX Pods related, go to mdxpods dot com. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at MDX Pods. And uh, I mentioned it at some point in the episode. Uh, check out Get to the Podcast. I'm on the hundredth episode, and it was really fun. It was a blast being on that episode, and it's a really great podcast. So check it out. That's it. Okay, bye. Bye.